if we look at this topic of common mode and differential mode currents, what you usually have is symmetrically operated circuits. Um, so on this side we have a source, on this side we have a load. And symmetrically, well, symmetric means um, the, the source is built in a way that it's like two mirrored sources. So we have, let's say, one, one positive source here, one negative source here, so that uh, we would have some midpoint in the center. And the same is for the load. So we just have not just one load resistance, we could also think about two load resistances in series so that there would be also some midpoint here. So you, you have like a symmetry axis here in the center where you could flip the circuit around. And um, yeah, so we can, and we have different currents and voltages in here, and we can give them different names. Um, so, but at first we can think about the idea of um, such symmetrically operated circuits, and it's if you have some interference, and if the interference uh, works the same way on both of these conductors, the forward conductor and the return conductor, because they are in a cable. Um, like this cable here very close together. So then the, the, the interference will work in the very same way onto the forward conductor as onto the return conductor. And so in the, um, in the load and also in the source because of this, you have it one time in this direction, one time in the opposite direction and also symmetrically here. Um, you, you just care about the difference between the thickness of the two wires. Um, that's why differential mode or um, on printed circuit boards in signal communication engineering it's called low, vo low voltage differential signaling LV LVDS. Um, and so if you have the same disturbance on the forward and the return conductor and if you just take the difference, the difference will cancel out. That's the idea. Um, so, yeah, we have a current on the forward conductor. Usually, uh, current should, could go, should go this way, do his work, do its work in the load and return on the um, return conductor. So this is the usual circle of current that we would like to have. So now, unfortunately, uh, because we don't live in a perfect world, there will be parasitic stray capacitances between the wires and the ground, for example. So we might have a capacitance between the return conductor and the ground, between the forward conductor and the ground, um, and so on. And due to the stray capacitances, um, especially at higher frequencies, currents can also go over the stray capacitances and then return somewhere else. Um, for example, on a ground plane, on the chassis, on the case of some system, something like this. And so then you have um, yeah, currents going strange ways. Um, for example, also on pipes here of the heating system of a building. Um, and will return somewhere also um, over some grounding impedance or maybe via other stray capacitances um, back to the source. Okay, and so now we have different currents. We will think about the currents in a second and we have different voltages here. So the voltage between the forward and return conductor, this is called differential mode voltage. This is the abbreviation for the differential mode. And um, the voltage between this midpoint and the ground is called common mode voltage. This will be, let's say, the source for common mode currents. This will be the source for differential mode currents. And then you still have voltages, or you could measure voltages between the forward conductor and ground and between the return conductor and ground. And there will be some exercise task about this uh, asset that we will deal with on, on Friday. So, um, as I said, we have common mode voltage, we have differential mo uh, mode voltage, and then we have so-called unsymmetrical voltages, and these are the voltages between the conductors and ground, uh, what I've just explained within the circuit. And you could just set up a Kirchhoff's voltage law. Um, this is what we will do in the exercise and do conversion between them. So how can you from these 
unsymmetrical voltages calculate common mode and differential mode, or if you have somehow measured common mode and differential mode, um, how can you calculate the unsymmetrical voltages? And of course, um, if you want to do this, hello, um, with complex um, by amplitude and phase or by real and imaginary part, you need complex phasors for these voltages. So you need to know them not only by amplitude, but also by phase. Otherwise, you cannot do this conversion. Okay, and so then uh, if we take a look at the currents, um, in, the, in the schematic before, we just had these currents I1 and I2 as the current on the forward and return conductor. And now you can try to split these currents apart um, once again into a common mode and into a differential mode. And the differential mode has opposite directions. As I said, it goes forward on the forward conductor, does its work in the load and returns on the return conductor. This is the good current. This is the current that we want to have. And unfortunately, due to this parasitic stray capacitances and maybe some ground chassis case, whatever uh, heating pipe nearby, we might also have a common mode current, a current that goes the same direction on both wires. And current always needs to need to go in loops. So uh, the current needs to return somewhere else. And as I said, it will return on the ground plane on some on the heating pipe or whatever metallic structure you have in the surrounding. Okay, and you could do um, use similar equations as before for this conversion. And so, yeah, now, now why is this important? As I said, this common mode current, um, this is the bad guy, the bad current that we don't want to have. The differential mode current is the good current, the current that we want to have because this is the current that um, is necessary to operate the circuit to transfer energy or information from the source to the load. Um, and now if you think about that, let me um, enlarge my, my camera window. Um, so every current, as you know, is associated with some magnetic field. And so if we have a current going on the forward conductor, and it's associated with some magnetic field like this. And then we have a current on the return conductor with, with a magnetic field in, in the exact opposite direction. Um, and if these two conductors are close together, as in the cable, right? I mean, in most cables, they will be very close together. So one current creates a magnetic field in this direction. The other current creates a magnetic field in the opposite direction. So both of these magnetic fields will cancel each other at least outside of the cable. Of course, it, in between the cables, they will add up, right? If, so um, if, if I say this is the forward conductor, on this side, field will go down. And if I have the return conductor here, on, on this side of the return conductor, the field will also go down. So in between the two um, wires within the cable, from the differential mode current, the field will add up, but outside, it will cancel. And that's why this differential mode current has only very few radiation. Said so no, no, no problems in terms of EMC. And um, yeah, and, and that's why it's also um, no, 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 not, not because of this, but with classical transmission line theory, um, you can calculate this current, and that's why it's also sometimes called transmission line current. Said. It's the current that you would like to have on a transmission line to do good stuff. Okay, and this common mode current, uh, this one here, as I said, is pointing in the same direction on both conductors. So once again, if you think, okay, you have one wire and a magnetic field in this direction, you have a second wire, magnetic field in the very same direction, then um, in between the wires, right from, if, if this is the forward conductor here, current will point down. Um, if I have the return conductor, on this side the current will point up. So now in between the conductors, this field will cancel each other, but outside of the conductors, outside of the cable, this field will add up. And this is not good because, um, as it's mentioned here, this leads to radiation. Now your, your, your cable will act as an antenna. Uh, that's why this current is also sometimes called antenna mode. 
And um, of course, if you have the very same current going in both directions um, on the wire, um, at the end of the load, it will, it will cancel, it will vanish. So um, let's say if you have some external interference in the cable and this external interference usually creates some antenna mode and if you have these symmetrically um, operated circuits as discussed before, so if you have the same current here on this wire going in this direction, same current going on this wire in this direction, then they will not create any voltage drop in the load. Um, yeah, so, but if you have such wire, uh, such current on a wire, the wire itself will act as an antenna and will somehow radiate. Um, okay, so that's the important thing about common mode and differential mode currents. And maybe the last question that we can discuss is, okay, differential mode is clear here. Yeah, so we have current in this direction, current returning. Why do we have not, or why at least it's a meaningful way to say if we have two wires, then uh, we have half of the common mode current on this wire, half of the common mode current on the other wire. Any idea? Why, 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 why uh, the divided by two in this equation? And it's the same reason why we have, um, of course, the two over here and the two um, here in the denominator of this fraction. Say again? No, it's a little bit because of the symmetry, but the, the main reason is if you measure such common mode currents, how do you measure currents? Alternating currents at higher frequencies? You take a current clamp and you put the current clamp uh, you put the current clamp around some some wire around some conductor and then if you put um, if you put a current clamp around your wire right a, 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 around a cable like this one um, then you would measure the total wire going on both wires into the same direction. And so if you measure, uh, you would get this one, common mode current, but on each single wire, if you have two wires, then you have just half of this common mode current on each of the wires. And if you would have three wires, then you would need to divide by three, or if you have four wires, you would need to divide by four. Be because you cannot, yeah, in such a cable like this, I have another cable here, so, uh, um, if, if I would like to measure the common mode current on this HDMI cable that I brought, but I did not need it today, uh, so I would put a current clamp around here and then I would measure all, all the common mode currents on all the wires. Um, but if I would like to measure the common mode current on a single wire, it would be very challenging before, because at first I would, uh, yeah, so if I, if I would like to measure um, single common mode like, like this on one wire here, it would be very challenging because I would need to at first remove the outer insulation. I would need to, let's say, um, take out a single cable. But if I would put a current clamp around the single cable, then, of course, I would also measure the differential mode. But if I put the current clamp around the whole cable, as we discussed, the, the influence of the differential mode vanishes. So if I put the current clamp around the whole cable, I would just measure this common mode and no differential mode. Um, if I would like to measure the differential mode, then um, I would, yeah, need to put the current clamp just around a single co conductor, let's say, out of, this, um, out of this wire. And usually the differential mode is much larger than the common mode, so if I would put the current clamp just around here, I would mainly measure just the differential mode. 